Hey guys, welcome to a very quick tutorial on um, just an update from my painting with pyro tutorial made in Cinema 4D 2023. And this is, I got so many emails about people struggling with creating the same effects in Cinema 4D 2024. And basically because of these artifacts that is happening in the color vertex maps when we're using the volume measure. If you are brand new in Pyro, please go watch that tutorial of mine because I really go in depth on all the Pyro settings to get this shape to start off with. And this tutorial is basically just going to cover the color vertex map issue that everybody's having. I have to be honest, it was quite hard for me to figure out and I eventually emailed Maxon to ask them how I could solve this and luckily the team emailed me back. So. Um, this was a little bit of tips and tricks from their side and R&D from my side, so hopefully this will help you. And with that said, let's dig in. Alright, so here we are at my scene. I have my pyro setting set up where it's just a sweep around a spline. And as I said, follow my tutorial to see exactly how I did this. So that where the settings, is quite a lot of settings to get the pyro to be so tight around this formula spline. And also what the pyro is doing, it's animate, I animated the color from a, a pink to another color, to a few color stops. And just to quickly show you what this color looked like, I'm, go I'm just going to add a material, a pyro, a pyro volume material. Just scroll down, you can't see it, but it's at the bottom. And I'll just quickly drag this. I'm not going to use this, I just want to show you the color. Actually, no, you drag it onto your pyro object, not the emitter on the object. There we go. And then I'm double clicking, scroll down. Then here in presets, you'll click pyro and you'll see that there's going to be, depending on what you've, I'll, I'll show you now where the boxes you checked, you'll see two, but you just want the color. So you're going to check color. And on that note, maybe let me just let it um, calculate. And then you have this beautiful color. Now, um, very important when you cache make sure that you have density and color on but we are going to split this pyro into two and this is the first thing i did differently in 2024 than was in my tutorial of 2023 what i did was is changing pyro to a density pyro density and then i have another pyro i'm gonna control click it's outside my null and I'm going to call this one pyro color. And then in the pyro density, I'm going to switch off the color because I just want density as my information. And in pyro color, I just want color. I'm switching the density off. So now I have two. And I can actually hide the color one just so that we start with the density first because the density is just going to create the geometry for us and to create the geometry to get that nice painting effect i've used the volume builder and the volume measure and let's put that under my null so then we add the pyro into the builder because you first build the scene and then once you build all the elements now you mesh it so you add it to the measure and at this point, you won't see anything because it's very tiny and it's because you need to change the voxel size and the voxel size is in the builder and it needs to match the same size as the voxel in your pyro output setting. So if you look at the pyro output, pyro scene, twiggle this down, you'll see the voxel size is 0 0.2 and you will change 0 0.2 here in the volume builder 0 0.2 remember to save because your computer might start crying 0 0.2 you're gonna get this little pop-up and hopefully it's cool give it some time nice all right so this is almost like the first troubleshooting if you see anything weird like this see the red it's just because your smoke is still showing. So hide your smoke by just hiding the density here. And that, I think that was number one, one of the first things people emailed me about and I kind of fixed it by just switching it off. 
All right, so now we have a nice clean geometry and you can tweak the measure a little bit if you want to make it less smooth, more geometry, less geometry. This is pretty tight, so I'm just going to loosen it up a little to like half the amount. That also helps speeding things up a little. You'll see that your computer will start um, staggering if the tight, the, the more or the smaller this amount is the adaptive and the voxel range thres threshold. But for me, this for this tutorial, this is fine. I also, I quite like that it feels like a like a dry brush or a dry marker. So for my look, this was fine. But maybe you want something that's more thicker and rounder. And then view my other tutorial where my the liquid was a little bit more oozy and um, thicker. So now to get that information from the smoke, because we want the paint to start at pink and then it goes to other colors and end to the red color. I am going to use the a vertex color map and just a normal material that's a standard material, the redshift standard material. And let me drag this onto my volume measure. You'll see it'll just be like a gray color. And we want the information of this pyro into this um, standard color field and if I double click on the node editor let me I've hidden it here let me get it a little mouse click just to zoom in and out and then you double click on this area here and you just type in vertex color attribute and you drag this into the color so it's going to be this pink color because that's what the default color is here but basically this vertex attribute we want to tell it what to use and we want to use a color vertex map. So I'm going to add, go to my volume measure, and I'm going to right click and create other tags, and I'm going to create this vertex color. All you need to do is just in this field here, you drag your pyro color. So not your pyro density, you're adding your pyro color, which is different from my previous tutorial. And one very important thing, again is to name this so we're going to call this color one color one so sorry elizabeth from the future here i just realized i renamed the wrong thing i renamed vertex attribute and i'm supposed to rename the vertex color tag so i will shortly realize i made this mistake but i just want to record over my voice so there are no confusion all right in the attribute name, in this attribute name, you will add this vertex color. Oh, but it needs to be named. Why is it not named? Oh, you need to name it color one. And just drag it in again. It needs to remember, it needs to know, hello. I think that's the thing, it doesn't remember. So color one. Let's drag it in again, just to make sure the name matches. You would think that it would update, but it doesn't update. All right, so this is how I did my previous tutorial. And you will see if you zoom in to your geometry, you'll get these really ugly artifacts that I've mentioned before. There's sometimes weird stuff like this RGB shift. It's just really, um, yeah, not smooth and not nice. And the way I got around it was and by no means, I think this is the perfect solution, but it was it worked for me and I'm hoping it will work for you too. I basically blurred the vertex color tag. And the way to blur the vertex color tag is by using it twice and blend between the two colors. So what I did was, and let me also show, if you start tweaking the voxel range threshold and the adapter, you will see that it will actually get worse. So if I move it to the right, it will actually get very prominent, as you can see here, see? And maybe I'll just keep it here so we can clearly see that nice different when I fix it. Oof, that's ugly. All right, so let's fix it. Um, what I did was I control drag by duplicating the vertex field, and I'm going to call this one blur. Blur. And then in the field, I'm deleting the pyro color. 
and I just drag this one in here. So it's almost like a duplicate. So remember this one, we have the pyro in the field. And then with the blur one, we have the color in the blur. So it's, I know it sounds a little confusing, but it's basically just, um, if you think in terms of After Effects, it's almost like having an adjustment layer on top of an adjustment layer, and it's just blurring the two together. So um, let me just go to the field, and I don't know, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, so we have the color in here. So this guy is dragged in here, and this is now the magic button. You need to click on average but before you do that save because that is the part that my computer kept crashing on that moment but i do want to make it clear that you can see the difference so i'm going to say average and let's hope it doesn't crash it's thinking and it's not working yet because uh, one little thing that i forgot to add now, now we need to tell the material to use this vertex color and not this one and that's why I haven't told it to do that yet so let me open up my node editor actually let me just undock this because it's a little hard to see what's going on I don't know if you can see that yes so we have our color one here but I actually want the blur one to be the information so let's add that and voila it's sort of fixed not completely but it's already way better and let me show you how to make it even better even though i i quite like that it's a little imperfect and i know we didn't pick gray we didn't want to use gray but there's something nice about that right but if you really want the gray out all you need to do is then go to your volume measure and just dial this down a little and this is also where your computer might struggle a little bit because now it needs to add more geometry and it's almost like it's shrinking the the vertex vertices although i'm pretty sure what i'm saying doesn't even make sense but that's how i see it i'm sure there's another explanation of why it's not working but see now it's nice and smooth you don't get those artifacts anymore and that is how i fixed my um, liquid if you by any chance have figured out a better way please let me know I have to say thanks to Ian Lawrence who made this beautiful animation by using my tutorial but he managed to fix the artifacts and I emailed him and asked him how how did he fix it and he was so kind by sending me his file so I can dissect it and thanks so much Ian I love the cross learning process so yeah, if you have unique ways of using the pyro emitters for your work, please feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what people are doing. And then I'll also in the description link my Gumroad where I'll upload some of my files so you can use it as a springboard for your personal projects. I'm very excited about 2024. Um, this past year was a very busy year for me work-wise, but I also moved homes and countries and I live in Portugal now. I used to live in Los Angeles. So I'm getting my studio ready to make a whole bunch of new tutorials and I'm very excited to share everything I've learned in the last year or so. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Thank you.